Mrs. Williams, and I'm super excited to introduce to you a new coding platform called VexCode VR. Since we don't have robots to build and code right now, this new program is going to be perfect for us because we can code a virtual robot using the same scratch language that we were using in VexCode blocks. So there's one main difference, and that is that we're not setting up motors and sensors. We're going to be using a virtual robot that's already been configured and built within the system. Let's take a look at it. Here you can see the robot has some built-in features, including a pen that sticks right through the middle of the robot so you can draw on the playing fields, or what we're going to refer to as playgrounds. You will also see that there's a built-in gyro and location sensor. So this can tell you where the robot is located on the XY coordinates of the playing field or playground. It also is able to tell you how many degrees you want to turn. So if you want to turn clockwise, you're going to use positive degrees. And if you want to turn counterclockwise or left, you're going to do negative degrees, as you can see in this diagram. You will also see that there are two eyes, a downward facing eye and a frontward facing eye. That both of them are color sensors and they can tell if something is red, green, blue, or no color at all. But they also determine whether an object is there, if it's the downward facing eye, and the front eye is how far away it is. And this can be measured in millimeters or inches. The final sensor that we're going to review is the electromagnet, and this is going to be used when you interact or try to move objects on the playgrounds. All right, let's get back to the workspace of VexCode VR. So you will see that the workspace looks almost identical to the VexCode blocks we were using to code V5. It uses the same library, except for a few things are missing because we're not setting up motors and sensors. But it does have a drivetrain, and the drivetrain controls all of the wheels and the movements like driving forward, turning right, turning left, and the speed, velocity. You will also see that there is a looks menu, control, sensing, operators, and variables. So we're going to go through and use many of these over the next several challenges. So the library works just the same as we used it before in the Scratch environment with VexCode v5 blocks. And you're just going to take a piece of code or a block of code out of the library and you're going to drag it onto the hat block or the when started block to start your line of code. If you don't like that piece of code, you can just drag it back into the library to delete it and pull a new one out. This time we pulled out the drive forward for 200 millimeters. So now I want to test my code to see what happens with my virtual robot. To do this, you're going to click on the playground icon in the top right corner to open the playground window. Right now, I'm opening the grid map. Now, sometimes this takes a few moments to open, especially on an iPad, so just be patient and wait for it to load. So here I'm moving my playground window down a little bit, and I'm actually making it bigger by clicking the expand button. I'm going to click play in the top right corner of my workspace and it's going to run the code and you can see it moved one square block of the playground field. So I want to change that code and change it to 600 instead of 200 and you will see that it now goes three square lengths which means each square is 200 millimeters long. Now there's a couple different angle camera views you can use too. This is the angle from the side or the diagonal icon you can see here. And then when I click the on above camera angle, I can see the grid and where my robot is moving. Another feature you should be aware of in the playground window is this icon right here that shows you all the information about your robot. You can see up at the top here, it gives you the heading and rotation degrees, the front eye, the downward facing eye, all the sensor information is in this panel at the top when you click this icon. You will also be able to hide your playground window and you want to do this rather than close it out because it does take some time to load that playground that you don't want to close it out each time or you're going to be waiting too long for the window to load. So just click this hide icon and hide it if you need more space in your work area to code. I'm going to give you one more example of adding some code to test out in this workspace. I added a turn right command and you'll see that my robot keeps turning right. And that's not what I intended. So I'm going to get rid of this block of code by returning it to the library to delete it. And I'm going to pull in the turn right for 90 degrees. I'm going to use one of my sensors to help control it. So now when I click 
the play button and I test it, it only turns 90 degrees, which is what I want. I'm also going to add another line of code to drive forward for 600 millimeters once it turns right. Now, in order to test this, I need to start over back in the starting position. So you will click that refresh symbol in the bottom left corner of your playground window to bring it back to the starting position and test it out again. So normally I would say it's extremely important to, to save your project and rename it with the challenge that you are participating in. And if you're on a computer, please follow along with this best practice. However, on an iPad, I'm finding it very difficult to save the files and add them to Google Drive or turn them in. So I suggest you go ahead and rename it challenge one to remind you what challenge you're on, but do not close the browser out until you're done with the challenge and you've taken your screenshots and video recordings and they're in your camera roll so you can complete your assignment. The last thing I want to talk about is the help icon, the question mark. Always, always utilize your help features within programs. That's how you teach yourself how to use uh, different programs and how to code. So all you do is click on a line of code in the library and you click your help icon question mark and it will tell you what that line of code does. So I think you're ready to begin your challenges. Good luck and I hope you enjoy VexCode VR.